Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Professor, a crowd-driven, crowd-funded feature where we answer your questions and respond to your comments on everything from history to political philosophy, economics, theology, whatever concerns us in our common life as citizens. And today's question comes from Isabel, and she asked me what I think of Jerry Purnell's famous political chart. And I'm, I'm all set to answer this because, of course, it's the chart that has economic freedom on one axis and social freedom on the other axis that the libertarians like to share with you to show that they're the only people who really respect freedom. Only it's not. It turns out that Jerry Purnell's chart, dates back to 1963, actually had on one axis reliance on the state and on the other axis rationality versus irrationality. And it's a very interesting way of dividing up the problem because obviously you know you put socialists at one end and libertarians in the other. His chart also separates communists who are hyper-rational, at least on the surface, endlessly chopping logic and hair splitting and getting into vast doctrinal brouhaha's with bloody consequences, from Nazis and fascists who are far more mystical. On the other hand, it has a bit of a tendency to lump conservatives and fascists together, which I think is a mistake. So I want to come back to the libertarian chart, which separates out attitudes toward economic freedom from those regarding social freedom. And this curious tendency that liberals have to insist that, as somebody once wisecracked, you know, I think it's fine for a 18 year old to act in a porn film as long as she's paid minimum wage versus the conservative tendency to think, well, no, we can't have that kind of film at all, but the minimum wage is a bad idea. And then you get your socialists who think, well, we don't think you should have economic or social freedom. Uh, or your populists often take that view. And then your libertarians who favor both. But when I was, I attended a, actually a conference on fascism at York University a few years back, quite a few years back now. And I was intrigued to find myself listening to the discussion and thinking we need a third axis on that chart. You've got your economic freedom, your social freedom. We need lawful versus lawless. Because in some ways an anarchist is like a libertarian who's grown fangs and hair. Right? As a fascist is very much like a socialist who's grown fangs and hair. They want to control your life, but they're also willing to break your head. They're willing to violate election laws. They're willing to have dictators for life. And then you do get your authoritarians who have many values that conservatives would find congenial, but essentially believe in strongman rule and deny their enemies equal protection of the law or indeed any protection of the law. So I like, I like that cue, but I think that this issue of rationality or excessive faith in the human intellect, because there are people who have too much trust in man's ability to design the future. One of the great strengths of conservatism, in my opinion, as a philosophical rather than a partisan system, is skepticism about human capacities. Saying, so don't disregard tradition. Don't disregard what we have found to have worked on the theory that you could reinvent mankind, that you could have given God advice if you'd been there in the first six days. You could have, but it probably would have been lousy advice. And conservatives are kept humble by that. Whereas you get this technocratic strain, people who kind of look like conservatives, but who believe that anything that the slow, patient development of culture, anything that religious tradition, anything that the accumulated wisdom of mankind can do, we can do better with the exercise of our pure intellect in a laboratory. We can breed better wheat. We can design better cities. We can design better citizens. There's a, a German word, Machbarkeit, that means anything that can be done naturally can be done better artificially. And I think much that is wrong in the modern world has come out of that attitude embraced not just by socialists, but also by progressive conservatives who do tend to have a weird faith in the state, like too many socially conservative people who want to deny others the right to work out their own salvation in fear and trembling. So yeah, the Purnell chart has got me thinking about this, this issue of rationality versus, I don't know, irrationality might be too unkind a term. That's why I think we bend off into the lawlessness of the Nazis and of the anarchists who scream at you instead of reasoning with you. But excessive faith in our capacity to fix reality through the exercise of our mighty brains. When you see the idiotic mistakes humans make, I think we need to guard against that. So for that, the Purnell chart is very useful. I'm still going with the cube though. Economic freedom, social freedom, lawful versus lawless. I think that's a more important one, but I don't want to elbow Purnell aside entirely. If you're enjoying Ask the Professor and you'd like to submit a question or comment, here's the URL to do it. If you value this on my other work and want to support it so I can continue to produce it, click here 
go to my website and become a one-time or monthly sponsor. I keep telling people, you don't have to give a lot. What I need is a lot of people to give small sums, $3 a month, $5 a month. If I can get a thousand people doing that, it frees me from the worry that I don't know where the next meal is coming from and it enables me to concentrate on creating the videos, the newspaper commentaries for which I'm paid piecework, the documentaries, all the other things that I hope you find worthwhile. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.